all the difficulties on the road, uh, which are there these days. Thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity to give some insight into our project. Uh, topic which was put for this presentation is from how does Noida International Airport accelerate the air travel experience in India. Maybe to start with, to give a slide back on, on the project itself, Noida International Airport is going to be the second airport for the NCR in Delhi. It's going to be, so to say, the first multi-airport system in India. Obviously there is now with MOPA already a city in Goa, there is two airports. But it's going to be the first multi-airport system in a metropolitan area, which also brings a lot of challenges in terms of the airspace system. We are located 70 kilometers southeast of New Delhi, as you can see here, which is next to the Yamuna Expressway. And we are targeting the opening of the airport end of 2024, so it's been less than one and a half years from now, end of next year. Zurich Airport has been awarded with a concession to design, finance, build and operate this airport in uh, December 2019. Concession is valid for 40 years, so until 2061. And about Zurich Airport, uh, for those who are not known, so we are operating 10 airports worldwide. Among it, Zurich Airport, which is the biggest airport in Switzerland, which is, I think, fair to say, one of the leading airports in Europe. And celebrating its 75th anniversary this year, as this has been opened in 1948. And we have been part of the project in, in Bangalore in 2007 for the Terminal 1. And now this is our return to India committed to stay here now, uh, operate for these 40 years. So the project is divided into four phases in our concession. The first phase, which is going to be to open end of next year, is for a capacity of 12 million passengers, at one runway, and then the airport will be expanded phase-wise up to a final capacity of 70 million annual passengers. If we look at our vision, Noida International Airport will merge the Indian warmth and hospitality with the Swiss efficiency. And we aim to be India's greenest and most digital airport. So if we come back to the topic of today's presentation, this actually provides you already in a nutshell the answer how we're going to be accelerating the air travel experience in India. Now I've been given about 20 minutes time, so I can go a little bit more in detail than just on this one sentence. But there's one key takeaway for this day of this presentation which you want to take away. This would be this that Northern International Airport will be combining Indian warmth and hospitality with Swiss efficiency. I will focus on three further topics on how we try to achieve this. One being infrastructure, one being data, and one being other digital technologies. We start on the infrastructure side. What we are committed to provide is an airport based on contemporary architecture, modern, consumer-friendly, and always focused on the customer. And this started already when we did the, the master planning, when we started our design phase. How do we achieve this? We achieve this by eight design principles which we have applied. Simplicity and clarity. And this in all respects. In form, function, flows, processes, in aesthetics and also when it comes to construction. Operational efficiency, which is the foundation for every successful airport. In this case, based on uh, intelligent design. Comfort and convenience. A spirit of generosity for everyone who is using this airport. Like departing passengers arriving, people are connecting, the staff who comes to work, or just visitors who come to enjoy the area in front of the airport who don't enter the terminal building. Short walking distances, also providing natural intuitive wayfinding by using the natural daylight, and by providing great spaces and landscape, great views. Seamless flows, facilities which are flexible to be changed in future. Giving one example that we made based on digitization which is progressing. Change a ticket counter, which is still there, 
but which more and more is replaced by people getting tickets online by maybe a coffee booth so somebody can go and take a drink there. So already in the design phase, making provisions that there can be water tap offs etc. Revenue potential for all our partners that we are building an airport in a way that it's possible for all our airlines, our ground handlers, our revenue partners from food and beverage, from commercial retail to achieve revenue and to do business. And last but not least, the ease of phasing. As mentioned before, we have four phases up to 70 million and we have done a master plan which allows us to expand the airport in a way with minimal impact on the running operations. Same continues if we look at our air site. What we want to provide is efficient flows for the aircraft, providing quick turnarounds to our airline partners by short taxi times. We also provide the ability on our parking positions for mixed rotations on the terminal building, meaning that an airline can come in on an arrival with an international flight, they can leave on a domestic flight or vice versa. There is no need for towing of the aircraft, as the flows are connected in a way that the minimum of ground time can be achieved. We talk about the second topic, how we can accelerate the travel experience. There is a lot about database decision making. There was also a discussion yesterday on this topic. So how we tend to do it is that we create one data platform in which we feed in all data from all the different sources which we have, be it from systems, be it from sensors, be it from our partners by going into agreements with them, sharing data so that the whole community can benefit of our source. We want to create one single source of truth for the decision making that everybody is basing his decisions on the same platform. By doing so, we can also do the next step. Every one of you is aware about ACDM. So you're aware ACDM is a process. We focus on milestones, we look at the turnaround process, we focus on the last three hours before the departure, more or less. While in total airport management, we need to look at the whole streamlined and flow of, of the passengers, starting maybe at home, starting at the curves, all the processes which might lead to a delay at the end, so that we can achieve the target of clock times. So the AOP is a digital product, it's not a milestone. It's one single plan for everyone, for all the airport partners, which will contribute to the same, and it starts at the time of flight slotting, and then it's just going to be refined. So there's no replanning done, it's just adding information, updating information, so that everybody can benefit of the same. But that we can predict both the next way at once. We already know in the ideal case that the ground handler might have a lack of staff in the next week, so it can be addressed, can be maybe things rescheduled, so that in the end the total system will benefit of, of the same. So the vision is there's one single source of truth, and instead of having individual silos with information, the whole community can benefit of information which will bring a better result at the end from which everyone will benefit. Or a little more sketchy, they say in the end we want to create actionable insights that the systems, the data which we have already can propose an action to resolve what's going to happen in the next few hours. Another topic is obviously sustainability and even there data plays a crucial role. By collecting data in different places of the building, matching it and connecting it with the dots of an AODB, for example, of light plants, we can do things like predictive building management <coughs> and say, okay, in this kind of the terminal there will be no more flights for the next two hours. So we might work on the, on the lighting, we can save some power, we can work on the HVAC, that the cooling can be adjusted based on whatever information is available. On the other hand, there is also the potential for predictive building maintenance. If we have several elevators at the same area, by capturing the data and connecting the dots of data, we might be able, okay, there is a priority for a certain elevator because the other one has already done many more cycles. So by this we can balance how often we need to do the maintenance and we can balance also the duration of lifetime of different equipment and systems. And data plays a crucial role also when it comes to the sustainability of the airport. And as I said initially, our aim is to be 
one of the most green airports in, in India. This means also on the air side, I think it was there on the slide before regarding the design principles for, for the asset infrastructure, that all the equipment which is there, used by ground handlers, by, by the airlines, has to be electric. If we look at other digital technologies which um, will be there providing us the ability to accelerate the travel experience, one of the key points is contactless and paperless. All that comes through the pandemic, we know how important this has become, not only from a convenience point of view, but also from a health point of view. So, digitization, just to give you a background here, in our opinion, it doesn't start with the cool gadgets. It starts with your employees, that we build a culture and a mindset of continuously improving things, automating things, and we had the unique chance that it's not only a great video, but it's also a great video company. So by that we can already from the beginning by the recruitment process of people, we can look at what minds do the people have, that we can find the right mix, and people are fostering this kind of a mindset. Also when it comes to the processes, we have been having the luxury of cherry picking experts from all over the industry into this project. At the same time, while other airports have been in the business, even like Zurich Airport in Switzerland, the processes have been growing organically and historically over, over years. We have the unique chance that we can define them from scratch. So nothing is there, which is a lot of work to be done that uh, everything is there in place once we open. But it gives us the freedom on a clean sleep to rethink how things should be done, to remove whatever is not necessary and streamline the things. So when we look at our vision on, on digital, we say that there are three E's which we want to achieve. So whatever we do, it has to pay into one of these three E's at least. So it's either into experience for the passengers, for the staff, it's either into efficiency or it's into earnings. Oh, at the same time, this means our focus is on the value streams, on the processes, rather than on the technology gadget. So there's not digitization as a self-purpose, there's digitization to provide or to produce a, a bigger outcome. So if we look here at our value streams, it should focus on our guests, which can be the passengers, which also can be visitors who just come to the airport, and our airlines, who are, they need a strong basis, a strong infrastructure that they can optimize the operations there is cargo, and also in real estate, one of our value streams, all the other concessionaires which we have, who basically we allocate land besides cargo, like maybe in future maintenance, uh, MRO facility, like in flat kitchen. So that the focus is on, on these value streams, not in departments, uh, not on gadgets, but really process focus. One of the other points is, or one of the other pillars for the strategy is that we use the smartphone as a, as a prime device. I mean, we all know it's been basically an essential part of all of our lives. We can probably not live without it anymore. And we know that the today's passenger is super high in his expectation and is also super highly informed. So he knows a lot, his expectations are very huge. And what he knows best is actually his smartphone. So why not making use of this? to process him through the airport. He does not need any familiarization. When we look at the passenger processing systems, yes, there will be a screen, but by the time he maybe find out how the, the GUI works, it's also easy if he can just use his smartphone and remote control the screen. At the same time, mentioned before, there was COVID. So it's also a, a support in uh, minimizing the, the risk of disease spread, if not everyone is touching the, the same screen, but just using your, your own device. Maybe in future it can even go to the point that we can reduce infrastructure like that. Maybe at one point we reach a, a situation where we can say we don't need to provide a screen on the customer, it's just a QR code which I can scan and then I use my own phone. When we look at touchless, paperless things, the same comes into parking. I have lost my paper ticket so often. So by reducing that, uh, going into collaboration with FastTag, license plate recognition, um, and even at the payment booth, why not use the very nice infrastructure of, of UPI, which everyone is using in, in other cases, rather than having a ticket where you need to pay cash. 
And I could have a QR code at my parking lot, which I can scan, I can put my license plate number. When I exit my parking, the license plate recognition will check that off. My bill has been paid, so it very opens. Otherwise, it might not open. I will get an afterwards bill. And we had a good presentation yesterday when it comes to flying from Zurich regarding the Giatra. It is the key to also provide a seamless travel through the airport that people can recognize their face as, as their token. And it addresses all the issues of the privacy that the data remains on your smartphone. And so this is also taken care of. One other potential option which we are exploring is the use of virtual lines in waiting. This actually is an initiative which would pay to all three keys. So experience, earning and efficiency. At one end, experience of the passenger is increased because he has a predictability about his waiting time. He knows I have my slot at 1015, I can go to the security check, I will be there, I don't need to wait for half an hour in queue. As an airport operator, it increases our efficiency because we can steer the way how slots for these virtual lines are allocated, so we can de-peak and at the same time we need to provide less infrastructure. And also what we can increase is the earnings, because definitely a passenger who is standing in a queue, he will not consume. So if his process much faster, he doesn't have to wait, then also our concessionaires will benefit in the end by having passengers who can spend more time in the retail areas, who can spend more time maybe having a coffee before their flight, and everybody will benefit. So another initiative which we are exploring, which might be there at Noida Airport. So to sum this up, some pictures where we stand today. There's some work to be done, but uh, the opening is end of next year. You see top left is for the um, aircraft firefighting. Then we have on the bottom left the works on the terminal building going on. ATC tower on the right bottom side, which is shaping up. And on the top right side we have the runway, which is in progress. The middle one in the top is like from the Operations Block West, we said before about uh, the data sharing and collaboration is today is where we let all our control centers like the AOCC and the SOCC for CSFS, so that all the control centers are co-located in one place. I hope I was able to give you an insight on how now the airport will accelerate the air travel experience and we're looking forward to welcome you there end of next year. Thank you very much.